Absolutely. So as we join our daring heroes, they are no doubt spread in their civilian guises across the country or in fact across the entire world. It is a calm, normal, typical day. The news is slow. There doesn't appear to be anything going on, anything that might trouble them until the signal goes up, a news broadcast, every channel switches over. But there is a major event going on in Los Angeles, California. A rift has opened up in the earth and a monster is crawling out the size of which we have not seen before. It is like a conjoined mass of snakes and writhing serpents, each large enough to swallow a train car. It is crawling and crushing and eating and writhing through the city, knocking over buildings, collapsing subway tunnels and bridges. Uh, terror is gripping Los Angeles. What is the response from our daring heroes? Who wants to go first and describe what you're doing when you get the call and how you spring into action from your civilian guys? Already then. Are we, are we like a league? Or are we just separate heroes? I was assuming separate. We didn't prep any league. Okay. All right. Um, I'll jump in. Um, and so I'm playing uh, the battle suit. And <clears throat> her name is Dharma. And I'll go. Um, oh, my goodness. Look at that. There's something going on over there. What is that? Oh, my word. Um, stars. Yes, madam. Can you uh, pull up any information, any more additional information on what's over there? It looks like there should be some trouble. Maybe uh, how many people are in danger, maybe? I don't know. Sure, my lady. All right, so is that your is that your butler, Amanda? <laughs> that, yeah, I'm doing kind of like a Tony Stark thing, you know, in the head. I don't know. It's like a robot voice, except that's All right. the wrong with. Uh, so, yes, your, your robot butler will, of course pull in all the multiple news feeds. You can see this monster going through. Uh, as I said, it's like if there were five of the largest serpents you could ever imagine conjoined into the middle. So five writhing heads, five lashing tails, uh, and it's wreaking this horrible trail of dis destruction. So what do you do? How do you spring into action? What, what are you doing when you get the call? Um. How I would spring into action is I would, after get up grabbing the data, going out the window, just opening up the window and jumping out. All right. Superhero, what, yeah, superhero in it out. And what does Dharma's battle suit look like as she's uh, leaping through that window? Pretty generic. It looks like a piece of plastic. Nothing flashy, nothing um, outrageous. It kind of almost looks like a mannequin suit. All right. Excellent. So Dharma is en route. What about uh, Landslide uh, and Zephyr? Well, Duke Masterson is working his wonderful construction job in downtown LA, and here's the uh, clatter. So in the run of civilians that are attempting to get away from this monstrosity, he runs the other way, and when he reaches the inevitable barren streets where everyone has already run away, he proceeds to ditch his hard hat and become his stony skin self and then start taking leaping bounds towards the sound of mayhem. All right. I'm picturing him like still wearing his construction overalls. <laughs> and he's just turning yeah, pretty much, you know, the own. bright yellow freaking overalls with the reflective strips on them and all that. He just takes the hard hat off and goes Big, <laughs> heavy right. boots, you know. And what about Zephyr? What's Zephyr doing when he hears of this uh, disaster unfolding? I guess uh, my identity would be John Smith. I know, very generic. Uh, this the scream of civilians. He'll try to help an old lady across the street before he can get his suit on real quick. He kind of taps his foot as she uses her four walker going across. Ma'am, ma'am. Hurry up, there's danger, ma'am. He'll look both ways and he'll quickly use his powers to pick her up and put her across the street. And he'll zip over to um, an empty alley and take off his uh, his guise and uh, underneath is his suit. 
and he'll speed over to the location. My God, what is that thing? All right, what does this super suit look like? Uh, I'm just gonna base it off the um, the picture here. It's pretty pretty cool, anyway. Um, right, so it's kind of an orange. Yeah, it's and like that. Yeah, orange and red with the lightning bolts kind of going on, and his cool hair wafting in the wind. All right, excellent. So I'm going to get you all to roll uh, your initiative to see who arrives on scene first. So you go all down right. to the bottom of your pre-jam, you'll see offense. Uh, and the first thing under offense is initiative. Uh, I can see powerhouse has plus one, for example. So you roll your D20, you have plus one, and that's it. Is there an online roller we're using? or we I, I don't have an online roller. Uh, you're welcome to use any kind of dice or roller that you want. I personally have a, a online roller that I use on my phone. Okay. Uh, I'll just use <laughs> I have a roller on my phone, too, because my dice are in my car. There you go. Uh, in my bag of holding, nonetheless. <laughs> Did you get it from Think Geek? Yeah, it's the shoulder strap one. I should have gone for the backpack because it had more... Uh, space, but whatever. Yeah, I have the uh, shoulder strap one too, as well as the purse. Um, I'm sorry, where did you say the initiative bonus was? Me, uh, it's at the bottom under offense. Mirror. Mark. Gotcha, I see it. So I got a whole 14. But uh, right. yeah, you got the canvas one or the, the black one? Oh, I got the canvas one. It's gray. Um, 17 is what I rolled. So I rolled an 11 plus 16, so 27, I guess. Yeah, the canvas one is the only way to go. The black one would rip if you used it as a DM and shoved all your books in it. Yeah, I've used the canvas one for multiple games and travels, so it's nice. I like it. All right, so Zephyr, you're obviously the first one arriving on the scene. Big plus 27 uh, initiative. Uh, so as I said, there's this trail of destruction already been wrought. Uh, there's a building that has uh, been knocked over. It's horrible. It's not a horrible angle leaning up against another building people are trapped inside the a subway mm -hmm. tunnel has collapsed people again trapped inside of the, the train cars oxygen perhaps running out uh, we also have a highway overpass it's collapsed on top of vehicles um, and one building has even burst into flames so people are trying to escape this flaming building plus of course the uh, the giant monster writhing through so as you arrive, uh, what what is your priority? What do you do? Dear God, man, what is that thing? I will look around, and um, I guess uh, I guess there's a lot of people in distress. I just I guess whatever the closest um, closest one was, I'll see if um, I can get to those civilians or as many as I can. All right, so I want you to make for me a uh, super speed uh, test. So okay. you, you can see under your powers, you have speed 15. So roll a d20 and add 15. And we'll see how many people you're able to save on this super speed test. Is that, okay, so under you said super speed. Okay, speed 15. And I just roll a d20? Yes, sir. I got a 15. So 30, I guess, in total? All right. So you're able to completely clear the nearest uh, disaster. So the closest one to you, the highway has been collapsed when this creature tried to writhe through or under or over it. Each head went a different way and the bridge totally collapsed. So you're rushing in with super speed, clearing off the rubble. Uh, it probably would have taken rescue crews days to accomplish it. With your super speed, that whole site is cleared. Uh, and you actually have five uh, points of bleed over that you can apply to your next um, super speed test, in my opinion, because you beat the DC by five. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so I don't know the DC. No. Okay. So what? What can I? Can I? What's like an average DC? Uh, so well, it, it it really depends um, on the exact test involved. In this case, uh, the difficulty mm -hmm. I would say is super heroic. Uh, which is 25, and you rolled a uh, 30. So that's why I'm saying you got five extra points. You're so fast, you can start the next site um, on this same turn even. Okay. Yeah, because I don't know the system, so I just don't know like the, you know, like in D&D, kind of like you can see. Well, I really don't. I don't, I don't know anything about D&D. &D. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, just the, you know, right? I guess like I a, just don't know. Like a thought pattern. Mm -hmm. Trying to, you know, put it together here. Mm -hmm. Um Okay. I will uh so I'm zipping in and out and rescuing civilians. And the last one I'll kind of like put down and be like, and here's my autograph. Well, <laughs> zip off to the next one. All right. Uh, next up is Dharma. So Dharma, you're arriving on the scene. You're flying high in the sky. Uh, as I said, there's a lot of um, civilians in danger, but it does look like Zephyr is uh, doing a pretty good job. He's already cleared the bridge. The monster, I don't know if that's more up the, the line of the battle suit power set, but what do you do? So um, actually, I want to check out the area first as far as if there's any portals or anything that the monster has come from. But you said it came from below, and that's what the reports were, right? Yeah, well, that's an excellent so, idea, though. I think everybody should make a, a perception test. I will when I get there. Uh, uh, where where is perception? Uh, it's under skills. I know the speedster I'm already looking at me is plus nine. So use the number in the bracket. Gotcha. Got it. Oh, okay. So, Perception, okay. all right. And that is on a D20, right? It's just a D20. Oh, my perception. You add the number Terrible. in the bracket. 12, terrible. 21. Not very perceptive. I could be on fire. I don't even know it. 21 as well. Awesome. All right. So yeah, it's Zephyr, you are distracted because you're trying to save people. You're down on the ground amidst the buildings. Um, so not as much perception, but uh, Dharma and Landslide, uh, you both see that not, o not only is there, you know, the, the creature writhing around, but you see a, a very small, like a cloud of smoke coming from far in front of the creature. And, and focusing your attention, looking over, you see that it, it looks like the creature, it's moving in a straight line. It's in pursuit of something. This object it's in pursuit of is about the size of a city bus. Um, it's like a me metallic cylinder with four big tank treads on the bottom. And on the front, it has this enormous uh, drill bit. And it's driving forward through the city, through buildings, through cars. Um, and it's just recklessly trying to get away from this creature with the drill bit just uh, spinning and cutting through everything in its path. So that's ahead of the creature, and as we said before, the creature pulled its way, dug its way up out of the earth some distance back behind you. Okay. So um, seeing that bean-shaped silver tank thing on the ground with the mm -hmm. drill bit, Dharma would um, pursue that. So however the running action or flying to is here. I don't know how many feet they move or... Well, you're you're so fast that I would say that you're able to arrive there uh, just on your move action. The way action economy works, you get two actions per turn. One is usually a move. The other one is called a standard action. Standard action is basically doing anything. Move action is kind of a lesser action, mainly just for moving or, or doing very minor other things. Is there any way that I can connect to the device to see what it is? Absolutely. Make a technology test. All right, technology. Is there a uh, bonus in there? Plus 13, it's under your skills. Okay, 24. All right, so what exactly are you trying to do? So okay. if I have any sort of servos that can come out of her um, suit, mm -hmm. That is what I want to do, to attach onto the device to see um, what is inside of it and what its purpose is. All right. So Dharma uh, rockets in across the cityscape. She sees this drill tank plowing through everything in its path, expertly maneuvers herself down, uh, and maybe you reach out your hand and interface with the data port um, near the, it looks like it has some kind of an airlock, like a doorway. But you just don't even worry about that. You interface directly with its computer system. And on that 24, I'd say you're able to take full computer control of the uh, of the vehicle. So it doesn't have a very sophisticated um, hard drive, unfortunately. There's not really much data there. There's basic software to run the thing. But you're not really able to easily determine who built it or 
you think it's very recent because the technology is, is very uh, high level, but uh, you're not really able to learn very much, but you have full control of, of the vehicle. Well, knock, knock, little bean. I don't know what you're up to, but it can't be nothing good if this monster's after you. Hmm, what are you, what are you all about? Just a basic vehicle. Did you destroy this thing's lair? Is that why it's after you? Maybe I should just pick you up and throw you back at the monster. Let this all be over with and done now. <laughs> and uh, I guess I'll hold that action until next round. So we're back to landslide. All right. So as I come upon the scene, I land on top of a nearby building on one of my super leaps, because I'm assuming I have super leaps with leaping 10. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You can leap for four miles at a time. What? <laughs> All right. Yeah. So as I land, I see this monster and proceed to crack my knuckle knuckles and say, well, I came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. And then I flip on my cell phone to my earbuds over and start playing Godzilla by Blue Oyster Cult and leap at the beast. All right. So make a uh, unarmed attack. So you see under offense, you have plus eight. So roll your d20 and add plus eight. All right. Uh, 19. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the defense of the monster. I'm looking at his parry. Parry is what resists unarmed and melee attacks. Uh, so I'm taking the parry of the monster. I'm adding 10 because he's not rolling a die, but he gets a, a flat plus 10. So what did you say your total was? 19. 19. So that's definitely a big time hit. So the way damage works, uh, I'm going to ask you for your static damage. So it looks like it's plus 12. It's right there across from unarmed attack. Yep. Um, so what we're doing, I'm looking at the monster's um, toughness defense, and I'm rolling for him. So basically, you don't roll to damage. You roll to resist damage. Okay. Right? So he's rolled a one. <laughs> That's what that noise was. So uh, his toughness, he still gets his flat toughness bonus. And then I'm going to look at your damage. And you get to add not 10, but 15 to your damage. So that makes wow. 27 that he's actually was trying to roll against. Everything else is plus 10. Damage is the one thing where you get plus 15 instead of plus 10. Uh, so there's a, a certain inherent bonus to, uh, to trying to damage something outright. Uh, and that's basically just to, to you know speed up combat. Otherwise, it would take forever. We do have a very primitive kind of wound system right yeah but uh so you have successfully damaged it i'm just looking so your total was 27 he rolled i'm going to tell you what he rolled usually i might not but just to explain the mechanics uh so he rolled a 15 total against 27 so for every five points of difference that basically inflicts a, a bruise or a wound onto him. All right. So that's uh, 10 points, but it's not quite 15. So he's got uh, two wounds. All right. Okay, so he's basically going to be taking uh, minus two on all of his future toughness tests. Not his other tests, but just his toughness test to, so that it's easier for you to beat the, beat the uh, creature up. Uh, and because it's two wounds, uh, he's also um, stunned. So he, instead of getting two actions next turn, he only gets one. Awesome. All right. So I know that took a little while to explain, but now, uh, Landslide, describe how you stun this enormous um, building-sized beast. Well, I come down, you know, like a rock and just double fist him square in the forehead of his middle head, just <laughs> full weight behind it and everything, just right between the eyes. Bam. All right. So I'm imagining like one of the heads is just knocked out <laughs> and the other four are dragging this head. And one of the tails has gone limp too. And uh, uh, the monster is still trying to uh, move forward. And uh, it, now it still does have an action. 
So we're coming through the monster's turn. So it's going to try to attack you. Okay. Um, so he's got a 24. So okay. we'll compare that to your parry plus 10. Which is 16. So he hits. So he hits you. So now you roll to resist his uh, damage. So roll your d20 and add your toughness modifier. Okay. So Does get a, ultimate uh, effort come into that in any way, shape, or form? Not to my knowledge, but I'm not super familiar with that uh, mechanic. Okay. Uh, add roll what? 10 plus my toughness bon bonus? Uh, you roll a d20 and then add your toughness bonus. Okay. So I rolled 24 on the dot. So 10 plus 14. All right, so 24 total. So now we're comparing that to the monster's uh, damage plus 15. Everything else would be plus 10, but damage is plus uh, 15. Uh, so that's 27. So he has uh, he has given you one wound, but you're not shaken. You haven't lost an action. So basically the only thing you need to keep track of for this is the next time you, you save against damage, you take minus one to that roll. Okay. How does the uh, uh, impervious toughness thing work? Impervious means uh, if anything tries to damage you with less than that rank, you okay. completely can ignore it. Uh, they don't need. They don't even get a roll against you. All right. Um, so I think your impervious rank should be twelve. Seven. Yeah. And my impervious oh, toughness is twelve. Yeah. Okay, so if anything tries to do uh, damage to you, but they only have a 12 or less, you would totally ignore them. They don't get to roll. You don't have to roll. Um, so bullets, you're bulletproof, basically. Yeah. All right, so, so yeah, you've come in. You've knocked out one of the heads, and now the, the other heads, they're trying to snap down and bite you. So I'm imagining... Um, as landslide kind of lands and he looks at the, the knocked out head and he just smiles. And then one of the other heads just plows into him. He finds himself inside of the creature's mouth, trying to like press its jaws open. Um, and his, his stone muscles are just straining against it. So that's what his wound is. Um, and then we'll come back through to the top, uh, which is Zephyr. So what? Where are your like? Where are your wounds? Where are your wounds totaled? I'm not sure if there's space on the sheet, but basically all you have to keep track of is um, like for for uh, landslide right now, he's just minus one on his toughness tests. That's all he needs to remember uh, for his hit points. And if he had taken two wounds at the same time, he would have also lost an action uh, just for the next turn. And if he'd taken three wounds, he would have lost all his actions for the next turn. And if he'd taken four wounds all at once, that's when you're knocked out. So you can see that uh, you get less able to resist free future damage as you take more damage. But okay. uh, round to round, it just kind of stuns you a little bit. And then you're able to recover pretty quick from, so, from the stun. So, basic, so basically, it's, it, as, as your toughness gets drained... That's pretty much like your your wounds almost. Yeah. Okay. So if you have toughness zero, you're already your KO pretty much. Well, no, they still you still get your plus ten um, on the roll, or they get their plus fifteen on the damage, right? Okay. Because you still have the dice that, um, in play. Okay, so if you if you roll well enough, you could still stay up regardless of being zero. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you go into negatives since you have a plus 10? Uh, I'm not like, sure what you mean. Like, like well, exact toughness five. It says toughness five slash two asterisks. But um, so if, I, if I'm at zero and then like I get hit and I get that minus one again, so would I be minus one or is it just stay at zero? Or am uh, I just. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you can, you're right. You can go into negatives because that's just your, your modifier to your role. Okay. That's all it really okay. is. So yeah, you would have a, a negative modifier to your roll, but you could still roll a twenty. And uh, even yeah. if you've been beat up real bad, you might be able to keep taking punishment for a while. Uh, now okay. the penalties will make it harder, but it could happen. All right. So um, okay. So that building's clear. Is there, and there's and there's more civilians. There's a. You said there's a. Uh, 
uh, what was it, a bus or something? Yeah, you've cleared the overpass. There's a building that's kind of on its side. The subway tunnel has collapsed, and there's a burning building as well. Uh, hmm. I'll go to the the burning building, I guess. I will attempt right. the same thing. I'll I'll uh yeah, I'll attempt the same thing. So um, what was that roll? Uh, so your speed, speed test, test is plus fifteen. Okay. And add plus five because uh, that's basically bleed over from your last turn. Because they're such okay. similar actions, I'm I'm allowing them to stack. Okay, so that's so twenty base. Uh. I rolled really low. I rolled a seven, so twenty-seven. I All guess. Right. And again, we said the DC was a twenty-five. It's a heroic level challenge, so you're able to completely clear that building out. So describe what that looks like. How Zephyr accomplishes that? All right. So I uh, I whip in and out, carrying little babies and kittens on my back, and uh, old ladies wrapped around my neck. And I will, I will stop quickly by um, Landslide and say, you, you, sir, you can have my autograph. And I'll throw an autograph in the phone <laughs> by. <laughs> While he's in the jaws of the beast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then we're back through to Dharma. So you've interfaced with the Iron Mole. Uh, you have full control. You could stop the vehicle at any time. What do you do? Um, I do want to stop it, but I also want to find out if it has a video recorder on board, like something that has been recording what has been happening, where, it's, where it has gone, where it's come from, where it's going to, if there's anything visually I can see, uh, past footage maybe. All right, and can I tell if this is alien technology or if it's man, uh, human-made technology? It definitely looks man-made. Um, so let me think if it would have a, a video recorder. So... so yeah, yeah, you're you're able to access the the video log. I'd say sure. It has a, a onboard computer. Um, so you see these uh, these two individuals. Um, one of them's kind of wearing the you know the the lab coat. She's got a great her gray hair up in a bun. She's in her maybe late sixties, um, and she also has a young uh, gentleman as her uh, kind of assistant. Um, he's also got a lab coat on, thick glasses, um, brown hair, uh, and uh, sh she's talking into the camera. You're able to access the video log. It says that she says that she's doing the, the test run of the iron mole to uh, uh, try to do some exploratory drilling to see exactly, you know, if her invention works because of the scale of it, a scale model doesn't work as well. She needed the full size model and she's going to be now testing it. Uh, and hopefully this will revolutionize um, some mining and cable laying um, and digging applications. And, and hopefully she'll be able to make some, uh, some significant uh, investments to, into her uh, scientific institute based on these patents. So okay. then you, you see her activating the, the iron mole, angling it down. She drills down um, into the earth. She's trying to uh, uh, affect some, some maneuvers, but she finds that the friction ratio is, is completely wrong. She can't turn. She can't go up or down or left or right. The iron mole will only drill straight ahead. So left with no option, she's forced to drill straight ahead, no turns, she goes deeper and deeper and deeper into the earth. Um, and then I think uh, we'll probably leave off your turn if that's okay. And okay. We'll leave that on the cliffhanger is where she okay. ended up. Because that way we can come back through Landslide, who's in the, the jaws of the beast. Indeed. So... He's trying to bite me. I've got this whole super strength thing. Um, so does he still have me in the air, or has he pushed me down towards the ground? No, he's, he's got you in his mouth. He's trying to chew you. <laughs> he's trying to chew you up. Well, then. Let's see if he's as tough on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna make unarmed or you're gonna run down his throat and try to strangle him from his neck or what 
I'm going to try to tear his tongue out from the inside. All right. So that would also be unarmed. So roll uh, your d20 and add your unarmed, which is plus eight. All right. Should there be like a Peter Quill quote right here? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't well, he know that the skin is the same thickness on the inside as on the outside? That comes oh. to a, a, <laughs> See, I was thinking Duke Nukem the whole way, so. Yeah. I'm going to tear right. off your head and shit down your throat. Yeah. You got it, sir. Yeah. All right, so that's a 26. All right, so it easy, easily hits. Um, let's see. So he's rolling his uh, uh, toughness here against your damage. Your damage, as we that is plus 15. Everything else is plus 10, but damage is plus 15. And he has a minus. Yes, and he's got, thank you for reminding me, he's got that minus 2. Uh, to his toughness save as well. So let's see. So he's got 22, and he's looking for 27. Um, so you beat him again by five points, so he's minus another wound. Uh, but this round, he's not taking additional stun. So basically, you recover from stun uh, every turn, but right. the wounds, the, the penalty, uh, remains. So next time he'll be at minus three total. That'll make it easier for you to stun him and eventually knock him out. So describe what that looks like as you've inflicted another wound. Uh, and feel free to uh, describe if this head gets killed because he's got three more heads. All right. Did this head get killed? So if you want. All right. Well, then as I grab a hold of his tongue and yank and feel it come loose, I proceed to kick his teeth out of the way. <laughs> And proceed to rip the tongue fully out, you know, just about prolapsing his throat as I pull <laughs> pull my way to the ground and then proceed to hurl the hunk of meat away and dodge out of the way of the falling head. <laughs> All right. So there's two two heads down. Uh, three heads remain. Two of the tails have stopped twitching. Three of the tails continue to thrash about. So it is going to try to uh, to attack you once again. Of course. So I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So that's 17 to hit. So again, your parry, you add plus 10 to that. Uh, so I'm that one be, off. One yeah, off. so he did hit you, but just barely. So now you're resisting uh, his damage. So roll your d20 and add your toughness. Okay. And my toughness is 14. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Dear die, stop rolling. Uh, 30. All right. So you uh, actually successfully resist all damage this turn. So do you want to describe how he tries to hurt you, but you're so impervious and, and tough, he's not even able to stun you or anything this turn? What does that look like? Yeah, he comes at me with, you know, the head down, try to bite thing, misses his bite just barely because, you know, I almost parried, and goes to effectively punch me into the ground with his face. <laughs> and I do the whole, like, double arm, duck the head thing and just take it and leave furrows with my feet in the ground as he slams into me and tries to, you know, crush me, but uh, the ground is softer than I am. So... <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, and then we're back through to the top, which is Zephyr. So you've emptied out this building. It's horizontal. It's leaning against another building. You've saved the overpass. There still remains a burning building um, and the collapsed subway tunnel. Okay. Uh, so if I go in the collapsed tunnel, I would have to um, open it up, I guess? Yeah. Or is it just like part of the action kind of going in? Yeah, it's, it's all part of the action because a okay. normal person could clear it eventually, um, but because you have super speed, you're able to accomplish anything a normal could, person could a lot faster. Yes, because I right? am fast. All right. Yeah. I will head there. Okay, so make another super Post speed test. Haste. Let me grab my dice here. So it's plus 15, and we're looking for 25 to clear the entire... Uh, I rolled a 7 again, so it's going to be 27 again. 
All right. So describe what does it look like as you're digging the one man rescue crew going down into the subway that's been collapsed under the weight of this beast. So the red blur kind of goes over to the rocks and I kind of like stand on top of it kind of like a dog and start digging out. So all the rubble's kind of going between <laughs> my legs and I'm like, <laughs> I'll zip in and zip out grabbing uh, all the civilians I can. Quick, take my hand. And I'll zip by um, the robot and toss her a uh, autograph as well. Here. <laughs> You're doing a good job. All right, perfect. So we're coming back to Dharma here. So Dharma, you're watching this uh, uh, video log from inside of the, the Iron Mole. And as you watch, the, uh, the scientist has been unable to turn. She's forced to go straight forward, straight through. She thinks she's doomed that they will keep burrowing till they perhaps hit the molten core of the earth. Mm -hmm. But instead, the iron mole bursts forth, and you see not sunlight, but this blue diaphanous glow coming from a very thick cloud cover. The camera angle is very restricted, but you can see this, this green, lush jungle, these mountains stretching around uh, this lake. And far on the other side of the lake, you think you see structures, stone structures. Uh, of course, you have the audio feed. You could hear the scientist, her assistant, just gasping in awe. This doesn't make any sense. You know, they should have hit the inside of the earth. They they can't be on the other side of the earth. And if they were, that, that would probably put them in the middle of an ocean anyways. So it doesn't make any sense. They've only gone down um, perhaps a mile. But nonetheless, they decide that they have to go and, and explore and try to reorient the drill and figure out, you know, exactly if they can turn around, if they can return, or, or what is this this strange place uh, that, that that they've landed in. So you see them uh, leaving the Iron Mole. As I said, the the camera angle is very restricted, and then the uh, feed is essentially dead. There's no people. They don't return. It seems like for, for several weeks, the Iron Mole starts to uh, power down. It's running low on, on battery power. But you can see these, these giant reptiles uh, occasionally wandering into view. Uh, you think you see pterodactyls up in the sky, dinosaurs. It, it's as if they've burrowed down into some kind of subterranean lost world. And eventually, as you fast forward through the, the empty screen, you see the assistant come running back. Um, it looks like he swam across that lake. He comes running back just in panic. He's, he's wearing um, some kind of loincloth. He looks badly beaten and sunburned, and he's crying and covered in dirt. He runs into the iron mole and activates it and starts to angle it down. And just as he's starting to... Uh, uh, to angle the iron mole into the earth to return to the surface, you can hear this tremendous uh, hissing, rattling roar, which you now know is the sound of this uh, behemoth hydra that's attacked the city. So you think he must have been pursued uh, from the lost world back up by this huge creature, perhaps coming from that strange stone city across that lagoon. Okay. Um, I'd like to, at that time, copy down any navigations that it has in the computer. So um, Dharma would know exactly how it got there, although it was a weird way. I'm sure it had some sort of way of kind of knowing which way it went. Absolutely. Um, and any other technical information she can copy, because the idea comes to her head that I need some uh, different skins to put over this very pale, very wishy-washy mannequin. I think it might be time to make some money off of, of uh, some other adventurous things. So um, she also would like to steal that information. After that, um, power level of the uh, iron mole slash bean machine is low, you said? Yes, yeah, battery power is quite low. It's still operational, though. 
Okay. And the monster seems to be still in pursuit after it's getting its two heads ripped off and everything else. It's kind of at a standstill or. Well, yeah. Landslide is fighting this thing single-handedly to a standstill. Hmm. So it's not able to pursue. It's trying to deal with this tiny stone man that's beat, that's slapping the crap out of it. Okay. So, um, after copying all the information and getting all I need to get from that, I pick up the giant bean and can I pick up the giant bean? Is that in her strength? Uh, yeah, it should be. You're, you're very, very super strong. So yeah. you can pick the whole mole up if you want. Picking up the uh, mole and flying it towards the uh, creature. Let me know if uh, how many actions or whatever I get to do all that. I don't. Okay. I'm still well, not we'll, sure we'll with the mechanics. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll say this turn you're, you're definitely able to pick it up and start heading um, in the direction. Uh, but before you arrive, we'll cut back to, um, I believe it's Landslide up next. It is. So now I got to ask about the super strength stuff and what lifting capacities are. Because um, sure. I've got strength 12, but I've got enhanced strength 8 plus. Enhanced strength four limited to lifting, lifting strength 16 or 1600 tons. Never mind, I can pick this thing up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, you can uh, definitely pick it up. My other question is uh, how do the, uh, the, the shockwave and ground strike work? Are they 10 plus a roll or are they just a flat 10 damage? Let's see. So shockwave is burst area damage. So anyone within your burst area gets hit by your shockwave. Right. Uh, ground strike. Ground mm. strikes. It's it's pretty much the same. They're both burst area. Yeah. So when you use that power with shockwave, they make a toughness test, I believe. Mm. With ground strike, they make a fortitude test to not just fall down. Yeah. Well, this thing can't really fall down. It's a snake. So yeah, it is. That. Yeah. All right. Well, then the head that uh, tried to bite me and pushed me back. I'm going to proceed to punch smack dab in its chin and knock it back because two can play at that game. Absolutely. So roll your unarmed fighting. Uh, 22. That's a big yeah. time hit. So I'll roll his toughness. And we said your damage is uh, 27 with that plus 15. Yep. Okay. And he's got now minus three, I believe. Yep. All right. So this time he actually um, is not hurt by you this time. So he made his toughness test. So describe how you're fighting the creature to a standstill. You're not able to uh, deal it damage this turn. Yeah, this time I punch it square in the jaw, but it being a snake has a rather springy neck. So I just kind of smack its head back, but it doesn't take any damage because it's not quite as ridges as I expected the spine to be for a, a punch there. So its neck absorbed most of the blow. It might want to see a chiropractor later. For <laughs> that. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, so we've got three heads down, I believe, and it was only two that were uh, still kicking. So we've got uh, Dharma flying in with the Iron Mole. So if it sounds appropriate, Dharma, we'll say that you're close enough that it's able to snap out at you, rush forward, and, and try to uh, try to attack you because it, when it sees that iron mole, it becomes quite enraged. Okay. Um, I do want to speak at it, although it probably won't understand me. Yeah. Hey, is this what you've been looking for, Bunny? Is this what, this is what just, just screwed up your land? I understand. I was just going to give it back to you. Um, do you understand what I'm saying or not really? And if it's going to snap, I'm going to take that as a not really. Yeah, it does definitely doesn't understand you. <laughs> that's that's good, though. Oh, oh, boy. Well, it looks like that's what the situation's going to be. Um, okay, if it makes a snap, let me know what exactly what it's doing. Because yeah. I do have a game plan with the uh, bean. Sounds good. <laughs> so he rolls a 25 to hit you. So your parry is 8. And you add plus 10. So that's a 18. So he did roll higher than your parry. So he is able to strike you. So now you roll uh, your toughness. So roll a d20 and add 12, which is your toughness. 
Okay, 15. All right, now he does a lot of damage. He, he does 27 damage, because remember, it's his static damage plus 15, because uh, his damage gets plus 15 instead of plus 10. So I believe that's two degrees there. So it's more than 10, but less than 15 that he beat you by. Uh, so that's two wounds, and you are uh, uh, stunned. I'll just type that in so it's easy to remember. So on all future toughness tests, till you get some repair on your armor, uh, just take minus two. And with okay. your next turn, you can take uh, either a move or a standard action, but not both. Gotcha. So yeah, he's now. Why don't you describe how does he hurt you? Are you able to do anything to save the mole, um, or do you drop it or throw it to the side, or what exactly does it look like as you take this wound? So um, what's going to happen is she looks over. She's she's trying to talk to the monster and perhaps get his attention. And apparently she got the monster's attention way too much. So it snaps his jowls at her and attaches itself towards her uh, left leg, leaving a gash of metal and uh, electronical cords uh, protruding out of it. The bean actually uh, jostles out of her hand and falls into a garbage bin. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> okay. So the and iron there is... The iron will crash down uh, upside down, let's say, onto a onto this garbage can. <laughs> uh, now it is it's it's really big. It's like the size of, of a, a tank. But oh, okay. So then it flattened the garbage pan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yep. regardless. <laughs> okay. So, so is that, is the drill bit still spinning? No, sh I believe that Dharma deactivated it, didn't oh. you, Dharma? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I need to power back up to reactivate it. I have a game plan. Oh yeah. Well, if the drill bit was still spinning, I had ideas, but <laughs> mm. okay, we can wreck on that. Uh, I never unpowered it. Because mm -hmm. okay, I, I could certainly throw that drill. Don't yes, throw the drill, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Remember that guy is still inside, and you haven't even talked to him. <laughs> but uh, we will oh, come back. Oh, he's inside. I thought it was like a vlog from like its past. Like, well, that's what you watched, but you watched him climb into the thing to escape. He's okay. still inside. Um, but we will come through to Zephyr. All right. He said there's one more building left now. I think we had the burning building, and I think that's it, yeah. Okay, one more for the show, I guess. I like this. I like the idea that Zephyr's running around doing all this stuff, and way <laughs> in the background, there's this big ah, I roll so low. I don't think I win this time. I rolled a twenty-four. Well, no, I mean, um, I got a twenty-four in total. Yeah, so you're not quite able to finish. I'd say with one point difference, though, it's not a big deal. Uh, you can certainly just describe how you're able to uh, complete the task, especially with the bleed over from last uh, the last couple. I think you both had bleed over. Uh, so okay. what does it look like as Zephyr rescues I'm everyone? zipping in and out of the burning building. I'll stop for a second. Oh, I think I pulled a hammy. Shake it off, shake it off. And I'll run back in, back and out forth. And I'll take my last uh, autograph. I'll lick the paper and stick it to the beast as I run by. Another autograph. Last one, just for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then I think we're through... Is it, uh, is it Dharma next? Is that correct? Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. So she's stunned and she took two wounds, you said, um, and the beast is still aggroed onto her? It's mainly focused on the, the mole, actually, the iron mole. Well, if it's still focused on the mole and I'm stunned, I'm going to, can she heal herself? Does she have nanobodies that can do that? Uh, I don't think she does on her sheet, no. I'll double check. No, you don't have any kind of um, self-repair power, unfortunately. Well, that's something to pick up later. Um, yeah. Okay, she's stunned. All she can do is hold her action at this point. Go well, over she, the data that's through her head, but she, if she can't move, then. Well, she can take one action. She could either move or shoot. Um, I can't think of anything else, but 
I think shooting the monster might help or even moving between the mole and the monster. But if you want to delay, that's that's perfect too. No, whatever you want. Um, I'll move over to the bean with the idea of getting the dude out, the NPC guy, because I didn't know he was in there. Okay, so uh, Dharma's flown over, uh, perhaps between herself and the monster, trying to rescue this uh, this assistant, the science Scient, uh, scientific assistant inside, and then we're through to landslide. So the creature is attacking the iron mole. Uh, Dharma is potentially in danger. She just got chewed on pretty bad on her leg. What do you, what do you do? All right, so it's my turn. I don't hear a spinny drill, so that idea does not occur. So I'm I'm not going to throw the drill bot at the monster. Well, I think uh, Dharma retconned that, so if, if you want, uh, you, you potentially could. <laughs> How do speaking actions work? Can you speak over and say, hey, there's a guy yeah. inside? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we'll shoot. Hey, there's a man inside the suit, the bean. All right, <laughs> fine. Then I'm going to wait for the next head to get close to me, and we're going to double fist uppercut it. All right. Make your unarmed fighting test. All right. Roll, stupid die. The problem I hate with these dice rollers is they either roll forever or don't roll. Um, so that's a 25. All right. And you were only looking for 16, so it's a big time hit. So he'll roll his toughness. I believe he's minus three still. Yeah, he's still minus three. So... Uh, so he's 20 against 27, so it's only one additional wound on him. So he's minus four wounds total at this point. Uh, so describe how you knock out another head. He's got one head left at this point. Yeah, this time as he's shoving down at me, I proceed to come back up double-fisted and proceed to knock his jaw completely out of socket and spin his head 90 degrees. <laughs> And it proceeds to flop over out. You know, the momentum of my strike continuing it over in an arc. And maybe it's laying over the one remaining head or or the one of the two remaining heads, I think it is. Yeah, well, uh, there's one head left. I, I don't know if, he, if one head can drag the whole rest of the four unconscious ones. So, so he's not really very mobile at this point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so that's landslide. I think that we're through to uh, to our good friend the Hydra here. So he's got one head left. He's really fixated on this um, iron mole. So he's going to try to uh, uh, attack the mole. Now, Dharma, are you uh, between him and the mole? Or are you going to try to interpose and take this hit for the mole? Or are you going to just um, let it uh, uh, let it take a take a, a bite out of the mole? If there's nothing that she could put in the way of the mole and herself, then that is, I mean, she, does she have a force field? Does she have any sort of, what does she no, do? Have I, any I yeah, I can't force think of beam, anything. unarmed, range close. I don't know. Does she have any sort of. I, I don't think that she has any, anything that, that would uh, work. Other than basically it's a, it's like an inner pose. It's basically like a, 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 a feat. Um, which allows you to to take a, a hit for someone else. Okay, so she has that feat. Um, we're gonna say that she does. I usually give it out basically for free in my games because it's it's so genre appropriate, and uh, okay. it allows everybody that extra action too. So, so yeah. Speaking of on that, uh, how do all out attack and power attack work in this one? Uh, I'm pretty sure they, they work very similar to the Pathfinder, where you can go up to minus four accuracy to get up to minus five damage, okay. or vice versa. So if you want to have very accurate attack, but uh, um, but sacrifice damage, you can do that too. All right, so I'm, I assume it's attacking then, and she is going to take the hit, um, but she's going to use... Okay, he, didn't, he didn't roll a very good hit. Um, 
So we'll say that actually, as he lunges forward, maybe you just fly by and distract him so much from the, the iron mole that you know he's not able to land a hit against you or the mole because he's missed. Okay. All right. And then we're back uh, to the top, which is Zephyr. So Zephyr, all the disasters have now been accounted for, I believe. You saved the entire city, um, and the Hydra's <laughs> on its last head. It's its last leg here, so to speak. So what do you do? I'm going to attack it. I don't know how strong I am, but I'll attack it. <laughs> right. Let me take a quick look at your sheet. You're really accurate with your attacks, but the thing is you're not super damaging. Um, yeah. I'll see if there's... You have any high damage abilities? I don't think that you do. Uh, I think I I only have fast attack. I guess I don't know what that does. Uh, that's the only thing I can see that says attack. Oh, offense. Yeah. Um, fast attack plus ten. Close damage five. Yeah. Well, you can give a shot because remember he is badly wounded. So maybe uh, if you roll high and he rolls low, or okay. Know, so I just. Uh, so roll your, yeah, fast attack plus 10. So you roll d20, add plus 10. That's your accuracy rating. I rolled a 10. All right. So 10 plus 10 is 20. Uh, so that uh, definitely beats his parry. So it's a hit. So now right. your damage is only plus 5. Um, but remember, you get plus 15 uh, for damage tests everything else is plus 10 damage is plus 15 so he's looking for a uh a 20 or higher on his toughness save and he's got minus four to that toughness save so you just actually did manage to um deal an additional wound so why don't you describe how zephyr is just in time to deal the final blow and knock out the last head of the hydra and put him down for good so the red and orange blur will run up the back of his tail and up the back of the monster and karate chop. And I'll karate chop the back of his neck and <laughs> he topples to the ground and a big billow of smoke comes out of the ground and he'll stand there with his, you know, arms on his side and he said, no, th no need to thank me, citizens. I saved the day once again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So the creature's been uh, uh, KO'd right there. Um, Thanks, kid, for handling my light work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do you guys, um, uh, we have two options. We could either take uh, an intermission here and come back with a second half, uh, or we could, if you want, we could just wrap it um, at this point. How long did you guys want to play? I, I'm open for a, an intermission. Yeah, that's and fine. come back for the second half because I'm I'm digging it. I, I'm liking this guy. He's developing a personality as we go. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Actually, can I do something that'll end on a cliffhanger before we go to yeah, the mission? Please, please do. Okay. So she wants to interact with the bean um, and open open the bean up. Um, also, she wants to see if the other guys are watching her at this time. Okay. What? Yeah, I'd imagine there's there's at least some uh, attention focused on you. Okay, but well, inside the I, tank, yeah. you probably can't see her when she goes inside the tank. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not paying attention to you. I'm kind of <laughs> picking up the body of the monster and dragging it to the hole it came out of. I'm probably too full of myself to pay attention. I'm just okay, standing cool. there. <laughs> Mr. Scientist, are you okay? She's I am talk. a construction worker by day, and there's a mess to take care of, and this thing needs to get out of the way to begin with. Gotcha. Mr. Scientist, are you okay? She's going to talk to the scientist guy. All right. So, yeah, you can see the the uh, assistant to, um, uh, to Dr. Uh, Roxana Jackson. The assistant, his name is uh, George Tillerson. You know this from the video log, although I didn't mention it earlier. I apologize. Uh, but yeah, he's beat up real bad. Um, he's filthy. He's wearing some kind of loincloth. Um, and otherwise, he's basically naked. And he's sunburned and calloused. And he just looks horribly dehydrated. And, and he, he just looks up at you and, uh, and might say, you know, we, we have to go back. We have to save those people. We have to go back and save those people. Are those people the only ones that know about all this? 
Are there others that are coming to help? Not to help, but they were chasing me. We have to go back and save everyone. But like your organization, is there anybody in the organization that knows that is a way of your predicament? Uh, he shakes his head no. I see. And she blows his head off and then goes over to the uh, bean and she wants <laughs> to... Blow his head off. Because I mean, I'm killing have... him. Because I don't think that this technology is ready for the world. So okay. I'm going to put a virus into the bean and it's going to go through the system, hopefully, and wreck any other things that are out there that would know about what had happened. Okay, we've suddenly uh, taken a turn for the anti-heroic. That's right. <laughs> yeah, things got awful dark. <laughs> this escalated quickly. Yeah. That's right. So let, let's let's take our intermission. You know, five minutes or seven minutes. You hit the washroom, stretch your legs, grab another cup of tea, uh, and then we'll see where our anti-heroes progress from there. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Well, I, I have anti -heroes. Anti heroes. Heroes. <laughs> Plural. One, yes. Yeah, just just the one that, that kills innocent men that are scared by shooting them yeah. in the face. Yeah. Point blank. But you know. <laughs> All right. I'll see you bad about the monster's predicament and doesn't believe that this technology should be shared with the world quite yet. Or she'll manipulate the technology and it'll make her money later. Don't we don't know yet. All right, I'll see you in five, guys. <laughs> All right. All right.
All right, I am back. I'm back too. I like how our uh, superheroes work. Everybody does their own thing. <laughs> We're not in a league, and we didn't have time for the, uh, you know, talk downtime, talk time of hi, who are you, and what's your backstory? I don't know. Yeah, you do all the, you know investigation stuff fast guy does all the save people's life stuff i punch the monster in the face <laughs> seems to work out yeah i mean i for all intents and purposes am the heavy so what i do is punch the monsters in the face <laughs> well that's where it's at that that's one of the things about a superhero game or any point by game. Is kind, you kind of have to make the character who will be in the scenes that you like. If yeah. you don't like combat, just don't make a fighter. If if you uh, if you don't like stealth, then don't make a rogue. You know. And uh, I I hope that <laughs> I hope that the clash is okay with uh, saving everybody. Uh, the speedster that's kind of his gimmick. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you run into, uh, there's only certain things you can do with certain kinds of powers, so. Well, against a giant Hydra, you're very limited as a speedster. <laughs> but you were not as a powerhouse, because you just punch it in the face. Yeah, whereas, you know, conversely, um, if, if you're facing, like, a, a an army of, of aliens, you know, Mars attacks, the speedster will be really great at, you know, taking out a hundred aliens every round, whereas the powerhouse, um, you know, less so. He could focus on the the flying saucers. Yeah, he's gonna have to get creative and throw stuff into other yeah. stuff. Yeah. Got you back, Clash. Yep. All right. Let me see, I'm just going to update my note here really quick, uh, and then we can jump in. <laughs> you killed George. That's so funny. So what does the uh, PL10 stand for? Power level of the game. Uh, it's like like we were saying earlier with the, the Pathfinder example. You know, if, if you don't want them to get... To becoming Hercules, just put a, a ceiling on the the game. Yeah. You know, if if you want to be Batman, you want to be more like PL five. Uh, Batman's just not that powerful. A Green Arrow or Blue Beetle, or whoever. Uh, whereas Superman, maybe he'd be like power level fifteen. Oh man. Okay. Or so like if 20. you said like this is a uh, power level ten game, then when you make your own character, like you get a certain like set of points for like that level, I guess. Yeah. And it caps your, your abilities too. Um, like for, for, let's use Pathfinder again as an example. If it were, you know, a, a level 10 Pathfinder game, you know, you have 10 character levels to spend however you want to spend them. You know, two levels of rogue, eight levels, levels of cleric, whatever. Um, well, in Mutants of Master, when it's point by, so you get power level 10. So that means you can, you can, there's a balance system, right? But basically, you can put plus 10 in everything if that's how you wanted to do it. Or you could balance, you could have a, a balancing act where you could drop your damage um, and increase your accuracy, or vice versa. Or you could drop your dodge but increase your toughness, or vice versa. So, like, the Flash might have plus 20 to hit, but he only does zero damage. And you still get a dice. You still get your d20, so that he could he still does damage, but he's unbelievably accurate. Or you could be perfectly balanced and have plus ten in each. You know, whatever you want for your character. How many pages is the uh, core? Uh, it, wait. So there's a. So what's the hero's handbook? That's is that just characters yeah, or the, something yeah that's the core that's what you need to make characters the, they they have a whole lot of other supplements but if you have the hero's handbook i mean that's all i have and i can run pretty much anything with it it's such a great versatile system but the hero's handbook has like the rules it's kind of like the player handbook yeah 
like I guess for D well you don't do D and D, but yeah. I'd have to uh, you know, make the tick just cause. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I'd love love me some tick. Yeah, I was considering uh playing the dog with the tele- uh, telepathy. <laughs> oh yeah. From the second season of Tick. It's on TV. It's on yeah. Amazon. Yep. That's such a good Oh, Midnight? The, the telepathic dog yeah, yep. that can start fires with his mind. Yeah. Yep, the motivational speaker. Midnight. Midnight. Yeah. Fantastic. I want to know what Gordon is, the 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 stepfather, because apparently he's a blindfolded ninja. Uh yeah. If, if you've seen all of season two anyway. I, I assume he's he was a superhero at one point. He just hasn't said anything about it. Yeah, he's probably retired in hiding. Has That's some a sort of... Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we could probably jump back in, guys. So when we left our daring anti heroes, they had Hero. just Hero. <clears throat> Heroes and anti hero. Right. I saved a bunch of grandmas. <laughs> They had just defeated uh, this giant hydra from beneath the earth. They had decapitated the scientist who accidentally lured it here. Uh, what are you guys doing now? Well, I will descend my hydra throne. No need to thank me, citizens. It is all in a day's job. I'm going to drag the hydra back to the hole it came from and throw it in there. All right. And what about Cause... Dharma? We have to get rid of it. To clean um, it. <laughs> now okay. And it. on that note, um, is there any way I can put something around that monster and like push it with the mole, like through the earth and back to where it came from? And then the idea is to close it up and then leave. Well, I mean, the hole it crawled out of is big enough that you could push it back down. Yeah, but it's not a straight it. hole, right? It's it's probably one that like left and right and. Yeah, but it's it's big enough you could push it down and then just blast the sides of the hole and collapse it and kind of seal it up that way. Okay, that'll work. All right, but as you're uh, as you're doing that, as you're flying over towards the hole, uh, probably holding that that drill tank. Landslide is dragging the entire Hydra behind him. Um, <laughs> so I'm imagining he's he's like you know hooked his hands deep into its scales and he's just slowly dragging this thing, <laughs> um, you know, foot footstep by footstep. And um, I don't Zephyr might well, be. I can lift 1,600 tons, so I'm I'm dragging mm -hmm. it. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Zephyr, maybe you have some really dedicated like uh, uh, fan club members who are crawling out of the rubble just to try to get your autograph. Oh, you know, here you go, here you go. Of course, two random touch... Japanese schoolgirls in their yeah. hat. Uh, don't touch the hair, please. Don't touch the hair. <laughs> there you go. But as you're uh, moving forward towards this hole, um, you can see that there are things moving out of the hole. You know, and they look just about as shocked to see you as you probably are to see them. It's it's full of movement and this horrible uh, saurian serpentine stench and hissing. And you can see there's a whole army of, of what look like lizard people um, riding, walking up, some of them mounted on, on dinosaurs. So heading forward towards the surface world in pursuit of this, this giant hydra uh, which was in turn in pursuit of uh, of George, who's now been decapitated, of course. And at their head, uh, you can see there are uh, uh, several lizard men in, in unusual garb, and one of them is is holding this uh, this large staff in his hand, uh, crafted in the likeness of of a serpent. Um, another one seems to have golden brass wings grafted onto his back and some kind of harness. Um, one of them has a, uh, a feathered staff, and he's flying above this lizard man army. Uh, so what do you do? You see a lizard man army is coming out <laughs> of the bowels of the earth in pursuit of this hydra. All right, has, has it they already breached? I want to know, has it breached the hole? Because, I mean, if we just throw the hydra down and then seal the hole up, are we all good? Or 
Yeah, they haven't quite come up over the cusp, so that's certainly an option. Yeah, let's. <laughs> that that's that's what I would. Guys, just throw that hydro down there and seal it all up, and it should be okay. Don't worry about what's coming out. We we don't even know about that. It's just going to end up to more uh, totalities here of life. We don't want that. Dear God, all the collateral damage. I wonder how much it all costs. It's too much for our society to understand at this time. We just need to just, you know, nip it in the bud. Stand so, back, tiny Asian schoolgirl. No more autographs. I will proceed to um, hasten my putting the monster in the hole. Okay, well, should we re-roll initiative or keep the same initiative, do you think? It depends on, do they look like they're going to rush out and attack us? Or if I throw the Hydra at the hole, will it all be good? <laughs> um, well, I, I think we're definitely going to end up in initiative. But should we keep the same one or roll a new one? I mean, what is the, what's the generic rule say for that? Six to one. one. Sure. I mean, I don't care if we re-roll or not. Yeah, I don't care either. Okay, well, if there's no preference, let's just keep the previous initiative then. I just always ask as a GM if it's a, if it's a new conflict or new phase of a conflict, and some players like to reroll and some don't, and it's all good to me. So if we're keeping the old one, Zephyr then would be like the first one to kind of see this and react that you know there's a lizard man army coming up out of that hole. Uh, he's been alerted. What does Zephyr do, if anything, or do you wait and delay but until Landslide throws the Hydra in? Yeah, I'm going to delay. I'll I'll just I guess my action will just be uh just to get next to um to landslide. Just uh throw the hydra in there, buddy. <laughs> I think All we right. have a, I think it's a good plan. That's just right. my action, I guess, yeah. So Dharma, do you take any action uh, or do you also delay and wait to see what land if how landslides um, action? Happens? I want to help him throw the hydra in as quick as possible. All right, sounds good. Uh, so, so assisted action, I guess. Yeah, well, we don't really even need to roll for that. It's well within uh, your combined strength to move this this hydra. Um, so yeah, landslide and Dharma. Landslide, obviously, you know, he almost like crawls underneath it. I could picture Dharma you know, trying to support its coils until finally Landslide finds that sweet spot, the center of gravity. And I'm imagining he almost just jumps, you know, and he's got his arms spread and the whole thing kind of lifts up off the ground. Dharma rockets in from behind and tackles it in midair. And uh, it just goes tumbling and rolling forward. Um, you know, it's like a thousand tons of of serpentine flesh and scales and sinew. And the lizard man army is just like, oh, they're <laughs> panicking um, as they see this, this creature coming down on top of them. We'll see, oh, my camera's so messed up. But their eyes go wide. They start to panic and turn and run. They're eclipsed, the sunlight is blocked out. Um, and <laughs> you guys just see the Hydra just rolling and steamrolling down into this hole in the ground, and you hear the horrible screams uh, coming from, from beneath it. Um, so what do you do after that? You... Um, is there any cement pouring trucks nearby? Uh, I'm sure you could find some, absolutely. Mm, if that's the case, I would like to try to cement or blast the hole back into some sort of shape so we can like cl close this thing in. All right, and what about Zephyr and Landslide? What uh, kind of uh, already destroyed rubble uh, do we have around here? What can I knock into the hole or punch the hole to collapse it, that sort well, of thing? Yeah, there's tons of stuff um, laying around. So you, you could start throwing huge blocks of concrete or you could start breaking off sides of, uh, of the hole, the edges. Um, I think it'd have about the same effect either way. I will start, you know, shoving the uh, debris that somebody's going to have to clean up anyway into this <laughs> hole. All right. And what, uh, and what about Zephyr? Um, <clears throat> as he threw the uh, Hydra in, I will make a dumb joke and say, uh, return to sender, am I right? And I'll nudge, I'll nudge Landslide just to like, ooh, ow, I'll rub my elbow, ooh. Um, 
so did she uh actually throw the bean in the no the beans thing in not yet? not yet no all no, right no, i'm gonna no. go see what that's all about because i have not interacted with that yeah so yet. that has a virus in it and i closed the door um on my way out so okay. you're gonna have to what, split it open to get into it if you wanted to what is this thing now oh I'll it's just, just a fancy thing that uh drills into the earth and stuff it's not very important i already took care of it it's done well, okay then all right well, as, as such a big fan club to help me <laughs> so as you guys are um you know trying to get man my camera's bad as you guys are trying to get uh this hole filled in and collapsed uh to bury this problem um you you start to hear this sizzling noise you look down and there's steam and smoke coming off of the the corpse of the hydra where it's come to rest and then there's a terrific blast an explosion of, of meat and blood and bone as something just blows a hole basically through this thing and those uh lizard man champions or lizard people excuse me champions uh who were at the head of their army come pouring out you can see that the, the one of them with the feathered staff, again, flying through the air, you see the strong wind whipping around, and he's covered in, in uh, uh, feathers, and, and uh, this is elaborate headdress. The, the uh, lizard man of the bronze wings is flying after him now, and he has a flaming sword in hand, and beneath them, uh, there's one wearing this bronze helmet that looks like a cheetah, uh, he has these boots that look like uh, cheetah paws on his feet. He's rushing a tremendous speed, uh, a rival speedster Zephyr, and clutching a golden bow in his hand. And uh, behind all of them is that uh, leader, perhaps that shaman or archmage with the, the golden serpent staff. So they have basically blasted their way through they're very unhappy that you just crushed their army and probably killed their their pet or their god, depending on <laughs> depending on what their cosmology. So they're coming out, and it looks like they mean business. They want to put some boots uh, to some booty. So we'll come back. Uh, this is why we're back in initiative Zephyr. So you see them coming through. What do you do? I have no idea. Hmm. Um, and we're in like distance, I guess, to engage. I'm assuming. Yeah. Well, you're a speedster, so your move action can take you like almost halfway around the planet. I think. What? You're very fast. Oh yeah, I got sixty-four thousand miles per hour. <laughs> wow. Um. I don't know. What is uh, quick quickness and all this stuff? Uh, quickness basically lets the, lets you do any normal task uh, very, very fast. Okay. So speed is over land. Quickness is like if you want to try to pick a lock 10,000 times in one round or you know sort your Lego collection in a split second. That, that's quickness. Whereas speed is if you want to actually move somewhere. Hmm. Okay. Well, is throw plus nine good? I mean, I don't know. Is that good? Yeah. Well, remember it's uh, uh, power level ten, so that means you can have up to twenty in any one thing if you have zero on the other side. Uh, so throw plus nine. That means you get a plus nine on your d twenty roll, uh, and you can see the the range damage. The damage is only two. Um, so it's again low damage, high accuracy, which is what the speeds you're throwing for that. The throw would be like running around throwing bricks or, um, you know, any, uh, rubble or, uh, you know, anything you can find, tires, uh, that you take them off the car and just start throwing tires. Or if you have like a, 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 a magazine of bullets and you're just throwing the bullets, but you throw them so fast, they do more damage than a handgun. Okay. Um, 
I'll try to do something different, I guess, and I'll try to throw something at the flying one in trying to knock it out of the sky or something like that. All right. So you have the the winged fury of the flaming sword with those brass wings, but there's also the the wind rider it appears to be some kind of weather controlling priest. Which which one are you throwing at? There's a wing. Okay, uh, the one with the sword, knock right. out of the sky or something. All right. Uh, so roll so, your uh, six, and... so sixteen. So what is that? Twenty five in total. Yes, sir. 25, and I'm going to be looking at their dodge. Dodge is to resist uh, ranged offense. So let me just go through and find his dodge. I'm pretty sure it's a hit. I'm just going to double check. Come on, low dodge. And yeah, that's a, that's a big hit. So he's going to now roll his uh, toughness against your damage. So what again is your damage? It says range 2. All right, so remember, we're adding plus 15 to damage. Everything else is plus 10. Oh, so 17, um, I guess, then. So he's trying to beat 17 with his toughness. And just on his dice, actually, he came up with an 18 on his dice. No! So, so as, what, what exactly are you throwing? Because he's going to put his brass wings around his body. I'll as, just as grab the closest piece of rubble and just throw it at him. All right, so there's just time to clip screen. this birdie's wings, and I'll throw it, and obviously it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, there's this stream of rebar and bricks and uh, rubble that um, Zephyr is just hurling towards this uh, this flying lizard man, but he uh, folds his wings down around his body to create a shield. Uh, he's not damaged uh, at this time. Uh, and then I think we're through to Dharma. So who looks like he, uh, is in charge? The weather looks guy? Like, yeah, the one with no, the one with the serpent staff. He's on the ground. He has this big feathered uh, robe. His robe is made of feathers. There's all these weird bone fetishes all over him. Um, you think he's probably some kind of priest? Okay, and does he have like a legion around him, or is he by himself? It's just the four of them managed to bust out through the hydra the rest of the army well maybe they didn't make it <laughs> okay i want to go directly for the uh priest but i want to try to subdue him with the intention of this is how i want come this is the intention mm -hmm. subdue the priest and do mimicking motions to get back in the hole and leave <laughs> or i will okay. kill the priest all right so guy, guy in charge so Make an unarmed attack roll to uh, run in and, and, and grapple with them or fly okay. in. What is the plus on that? Is there one or unarmed, you said? Unarmed. Yeah, unarmed is plus eight it's down there under offense. 25. All right. So I'm pretty sure his parry is really low. I'm just going to double check it. Yeah, so it's a big time, uh, big time success. So describe. So you fly in um, and you grapple with this lizard person. How exactly are you you grabbing him? You've got him in like a full Nelson or bear hug, or just picked him up with one hand, or what are you doing with him? Um, I wrap his robe around him super tight so he can't do anything. Kind of like a straight jacket. Swaddled. Swaddled. I swaddled the uh, leader man, and uh, I put the staff to his neck, and then I I kind of like hold him in that pose, and I guess she's like super strong, right? So he ain't going nowhere, and she's gonna point to to the dudes to get back in the hole and make the I'm gonna kill him motion if you don't. Okay, um, so make a persuasion test. So you have plus four to your persuasion. Throat to finger. 17. 17. Okay. So I'm going to leave the results of that test to uh, to their turn, uh, and we'll come through to landslide. Okay, so the speedster is pelting the guy with the golden wings, and there's another guy that's, like, floating on the air, right? 
Yeah, we've got the High Priest, we've got the uh, Winged Fury of the Flaming Sword, we've got the Lightning Archer, who seems to have uh, some kind of magical bow and super speed of his own, and then, yeah, the Weather Controller as well, the Wind Rider. All right, well, I'm going to find, you know, somewhere between a 1,000 and a ton uh, weighing chunk of concrete and throw it at the Weather Guy. All right. Well, you should have a ranged um, attack on your sheet there. Under yeah, offense. it's, it's um, the same as my uh, okay. unarmed. So perfect. It's still eight. All right, so roll your d twenty and add plus eight. All right. Uh, twenty one. Twenty one, and I'll just check his dodge. Let's see, so that's definitely a hit. So he's making toughness against 27 is what he wants. 27. So he fails by just one. So he's uh, minus one wound. So Dharma's like run over. She she's squeezing the high priest in his in his own robes trying to get the attention of the lizard man. And while they're distracted and the wind rider just stops and he's, he looks worried. Like he doesn't know what to do. And then this huge section of granite and the concrete comes flying out of nowhere and just pancakes him. Uh, and he just goes down in a heap and he's just pulling himself out of the rubble. Um, he's not looking uh, very happy or healthy after that. <laughs> Uh, and then I think we're through to our NPCs. So they were, let's see. Now we'll say that the, uh, the winged fury and the lightning archer, they're still hesitating. They're looking at the high priest. They don't seem to give a shit about the wind rider. Like maybe they're not pals. <laughs> um, but our high priest here. So I want you to make a, uh, Another unarmed uh, fighting test, uh, Dharma, and he's basically going to be making a uh, a post spell casting test to try to cast a spell while you're grabbing him. Okay, twenty one. All right, twenty one, and he only came up with a fifteen, so he starts um, kind of writhing and hissing and gesticulating. He's trying to create some kind of magical effect. Maybe you can feel like um, some electricity in the air, like your your your. Uh, well, you actually you're just a brain in a jar, so I don't know how much sense sensory. <laughs> uh, you might have sensory deprivation, actually. Well, I mean, but, like her body, if she wants it to have sensation, she could. And, you know, it's not like a brain in a jar. It's it's a brain that's hooked up to the machine. It's all electronic signals. Yeah. Right. Well, it's, but it's, it's a magical effect, so I don't know how much you'd, you'd notice. You could tell he's squirming. I don't know if right. you could tell that he's drawing on so magical she, she'd energy. probably pick up on the el electrical like stimulation that it's putting off, like static, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, the Wind Rider, he is pissed, so he doesn't even care at this point. Um so he is going to come up through. And basically, he's directing a cyclone uh, towards you, Landslide. He's trying to pick you up off the ground and just throw you uh, away. So what is your uh, dodge? Let's see if you can dodge this cyclone that he's throwing at you. For me or yeah, okay. Uh, dodge, 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 dodge. Oh, six. All right, and you add ten to that, of course. So it's sixteen. Um, so he manages to hit you with his cyclone. So basically, he's picking you up in the cyclone, and he's just throwing you. Um, so roll toughness for when you when you hit the ground. Well, he's trying to throw you to the side of a building, actually. But regardless, roll roll toughness. 
Okay, cold, heat, damage, fatigue, pressure, impervious toughness. I have immunity. What's at your very bottom of your sheet under defense? Yeah. I got that. I was just trying to see if it applied. It, well, how much is your impervious again? Um, I have impervious uh, toughness 12. <laughs> okay. So actually, because his damage is, uh, is 12, you're impervious to any damage of that rank or lower. Blocked. So yeah, he, he, <laughs> he does throw you. He throws you through a building. The side he tickled of you. You find yourself, yeah, you find yourself maybe in inside of an office building, like in in a cubicle um, that's been evacuated. The building's been evacuated, but you're so tough that it he can't just throw you around and hurt you. You're far too tough for that to actually do anything to you. Yeah, this is going to lead to one of those stereotypical Marvel movie humor moments when he does that, <laughs> and then a desk comes flying out of the office and hits him. <laughs> Cause Absolutely. Because <laughs> puh. Well, Zephyr, we are back to you though. The, the lizard men have not retreated. They're hesitating, except for the the high priest is trying to cast a spell, and uh, 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 the wind rider has just hurled landslide through the side of a building. So you you might know intellectually he's probably fine. He's made of stone, but you can't see him. Uh, yeah, I'll attack the wind rider guy since he's on the ground. All right. Okay. So roll it. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be your unarmed fighting. Yeah. Or just uh, so it it's is it the fast attack, right? Yeah. Uh, right. Let me check the oh, sheet fast. again. Yeah, fast attack. All right. So twelve. So uh, so we always have the plus ten. So it's is that a twenty a twenty well, standard? If, I guess? If, if if you're rolling, you add the dice roll. Okay. Right, but if, so 12, if you're not rolling, if it's a defense, then you just add a static plus ten, as if you rolled a ten. Okay, so twenty-two. All right, twenty-two. So I'll compare that to uh, uh, the Wind Riders parry. So he's adding plus ten because he's not rolling. So you're looking for fourteen total, big time hit on a twenty-two. So now he will save against your damage. So what's the damage on your fast attack? Uh, close damage five. What is multi attack five? Selective right. five. Yeah, so it's five, and then damage is the one thing where you get plus fifteen instead of plus ten. So he's trying to beat a twenty if you've got uh, a plus five. Okay. Uh, now he actually did. He came up with a twenty-five. So as you're running forward Stop towards, i blocking him, all my stuff. <laughs> yeah. So as you're running forward towards him. You know, and you're launching like a hundred punches into his face, but this tornado, this cyclone is coming up around him, and it's just deflecting you enough that you know he he's not actually uh, uh, hurt. He like he might feel some pain, but it's not enough to stun him or deal him a wound. So, so what is the him. so what is the multi attack five and selective five? Uh, so, yeah, you have some special abilities on the character. So if you want to attack multiple people at once, you can. Um, or if you want to – I believe the multi-attack is is if you want to try to attack the same target multiple times. I'm honestly not very, very familiar with that rule off the top of my head. So we'll, we'll probably just stick to the, the base damage if that's okay. Okay. Because I'm just not super familiar with the rule. I know – if you can attack multiple people, like you could have run in and attacked the whole lizard man army or at least a good chunk of them um, all at once. And they're so weak that you could, you, maybe you could take them all out, but uh, leave but my we, groupie alone. Yeah. But we buried them anyway. Uh, so Dharma, I believe we're back up to you. So you have the high priest, you're squeezing him. He's squirming. Uh, uh, okay. Nobody's paying attention to the, uh, motions, I guess, since they're all kind of in combat. Yeah, well, the the lightning archer and the flaming swordsman are both hesitating. They're watching you. They're not taking any action. So you've completely distracted them from the fight. But uh, they're not leaving. 
and uh, the, the high priest is not really doing anything that looks like surrendering. When she hacked into the um, mole bean, um, did she learn any languages? Did they make any notes of language or had time to do that? No, because remember he, they left the mole, it got captured for like two or three weeks. And then one of the, George escaped, ran back to the mole and burrowed back up to the surface. So that's all the mole got to really see. George probably could speak their language, but you blew his head off. <laughs> that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, Lord, George was dehydrated and he was probably close to passing out. So, you know, George wouldn't have been very much help anyways. And he probably just would have gotten killed by a lizard person anyway. So, you know. Um, all right. So I'm still going to try to gesture and persuade them to um, get into the hole, I guess. All right, so make another persuasion test. 23. All right, um, let's see. So the, the, so you're, you know, gesturing and maybe like shaking this guy a little bit, uh, just to show them that you mean business and you're serious. So on a 23, maybe the, uh, um, the, the flaming swordsman and the lightning archer they'll they'll move like towards you the flaming swordsman will will put his sword out and they kind of raise their hands up and like they're trying to calm you down so you don't snap uh the guy's neck and we'll say the uh uh the wind rider he's you know he's just been attacked by zephyr so he's backing up but now that he sees you're shaking his boss he kind of like moves into a defensive posture but he doesn't take any offensive action. So they're all kind of paying attention at this point. They, they think that you mean business, but they're still hesitant. Uh, and then we'll come back through to Landslide's turn, unless you, there's anything else you can do, Dharma. Um, I'm gonna try to move him closer to the hole. So okay. like, yeah, so they get the idea of like, go back. No problem. So I'm gonna try to convey, and she'll light up her eyes red, so they kind of <laughs> even even get more of an idea that she means business, like here, and kind of nod towards the hole. Okay, landslide. I'm gonna throw a desk at the, <laughs> the cloud guy because. <laughs> okay, uh, so roll that ranged uh, attack roll then. He annoyed me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can just see he's like. He's, you know, trying to be like, okay, let's calm down and sort things out, Zephyr, and don't hurt my boss, uh, Dharma. And then this desk just <laughs> plows into the side of his head. Clang. Um, yeah. So what do you got on your uh, range attack? Uh, that is a 27. That's a big time hit. Um, so he'll make a save against your range damage, essentially. Um, let's see. Rolled really well. He does have one wound, but he's he still hasn't taken a second wound. So the desk hit him, but that um, that cyclone aura around him, it's basically like a shield that he has these winds whipping around him so fast it deflects a lot of the incoming damage. That's why he's so tough. So the desk hits him. He goes flying onto the ground, but he's he's starts to spring up to his feet fairly quickly. So that's your um, standard Attack action. action. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, you want to take a move or just stay up where you are? Uh, I'm going to leap out of the building and much closer to him, uh, very uncomfortably close to him. <laughs> <laughs> but he's sca that scares him because he's not a big – he's like a, a skinny little snake man, and he's only like five feet tall. Uh, and I, how tall is Landslide? I'm picturing him as like seven feet tall. Yeah, he's he's a big dude. He's like, you know, seven four. And if he was a regular dense human being, he'd be like 350. <laughs> yeah, so the Wind Riders is spooked by this. Um, he actually is going to start to beg off and retreat backwards down the hole. So he's got his hands up in front of him and he's like, you know, <laughs> he's like begging off and he's backing yeah. up into the hole. Don't punch me in um, the face, bro. <laughs> yeah. The other two, uh, the flaming swordsman and the uh, lightning archer, they're 
looking like maybe they want to follow him. Um, I think the high priest is going to try one more time to cast a spell, though. So let's get another unarmed uh, uh, attack, offense test there, Dharma. Okay. That was a 19. 19 total. Oh, uh, what was the modifier on that one? Um, whatever it says under your offense for your unarmed. Oh, yeah, plus 8. So 19 plus 8. 27. Great, thank you. All right. Okay, so he's, yeah, he's squirming again. He's trying to do something. You know, you guys are probably now close enough that uh, if Dharma didn't notice, um, then you guys would definitely notice. He's trying to call on some kind of uh, uh, weird uh, serpentine incantation, but he's not able to. Dharma's squeezing him too tight. Um, so they're basically taking no action this turn uh, other than the Wind Rider is retreating slowly. And then we're back to Zephyr. Does it look? Uh, does he have a staff? You said the Wind Rider has a staff, and the uh, High Priest also has a staff. Yeah, had a staff. He probably dropped that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. No magic okay. for him. <laughs> so the so it doesn't look like the staff was giving him the magic. He's basically calling it from himself. Uh, yeah, it, it looks like he still has at least some spellcasting ability, even without the staff in his hand. Mm. Go for the staff. Be like, I have the conch. You guys will all listen to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm imagining Zephyr goes and he picks up the staff and he just throws it down the hole. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Yeah. I thought if, if he was holding, I was going to disarm him. But yeah, I'll grab the staff. I don't. Is that an, like I don't do I have to roll? I mean, it's no. just sitting on the ground. Yeah, you can just go pick it up. Because they're not trying to stop you. They're still scared that Dharma's going to twist this guy's head off. Yeah, I'll grab it and throw it down the hole. Why not? All right. So there's Zephyr's there. action. You didn't want to break it. <laughs> you could have broken it in half first. Be like, taking your power source. But then sure. go. I'm not very bright. I have intellect <laughs> zero, okay? I throw it down the damn hole. <laughs> Take so, your uh, fetch boy. I'll throw it down there. Dharma, uh, you're up. Um, so he did try to just cast another spell. Uh, he failed again. You, you, his body language is changing. You think he's getting pretty demoralized, and his staff's gone down a hole now. So what what do you do? Do you keep holding him, or do you throw him down the hole after his stick, or what do you do? <laughs> um, I'm going to knock him out and throw him down the hall. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay. Um, so make a... Uh, Another unarmed attack? Yeah. I don't know what to knock out is on this, so. Well, basically, because it's super heroic, um, all of the combat is geared towards knocking someone out instead of killing them. Okay. Now, it's really easy to, to modify that. There's an alternate house rule and such. But uh, by default, that's the way it works, is you, you brawl someone uh, slowly into unconsciousness. But uh, So roll your unarmed, and... Um, because he's grappled, I think you get like a plus eight or plus four. His his uh, parry is so low, I, I, I don't think you'll need it. But go ahead and roll just in case. Okay. So plus eight to 18. All right. So, yeah, he, you don't even need a bonus. Um, you're able to uh, uh, deal some damage to him. So I'll make a toughness for him. Now he doesn't have his, his doesn't have his mystic shield up, so he's in some big trouble on this one. All right. So what is your uh, unarmed damage there? Uh, I, what what is to roll the damage? Is it like a d four or six or something? No, he rolls toughness against your damage. Oh, so, so like. So let's see, your damage is 12. So because he's rolling against you, usually you'd add a plus 10, but damage is the one exception. You actually add plus 15. So it's 27 that he has to beat um, to not get damaged. And now he only rolled a four. <laughs> okay. Bless him, because he has, 
he, he doesn't have his mystic force field up. <laughs> so he has a zero modifier. He's com completely normal human level toughness. So all he gets is his dice and he rolled a, a, a four on his D20. Okay. Well, so I... for, for every five points that, uh, that you Just... beat him by, you deal an extra wound. Um, so you are able to just knock him out at okay. that point. So That's sixteen. Like four wounds. Yeah. So describe how you knock out the high priest and what you do with him once he's or kill him. I don't care. You already um, blew that guy's head off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's one of your own kind. So yeah, no, we don't want to cut off the this guy's head off. Um, so I I want to swaddle him to the point where he uh, is incapacitated, <laughs> and then I just kind of throw him down the hole, and then I look at the dudes floating in the sky or wherever they are, and then just point like, go get them. All right. And then uh, All right. when I do that, I'm gonna have a little force in my hands just come out like little beams, just psh, psh, like kind of like get the hint, go down there. All right, so I think their morale is completely broken at that point, and they are going to start booking it down the hole, turn tail and run. Um, so you've uh, you've demoralized and defeated the uh, the champions of the lost world, the heroes of the hollow earth. So what what do you guys do now? Try to close up the hole. Get out of my stinking hole. Trying to close up the hole. Okay. How big That's is awesome. this hole? Well, it's big, but you got big time strength behind you, so it's not. Uh, yeah, it, closing it the takes... hole. So I'm sure there's like news media cameras and everything else. I'm gonna come into the system and uh, request backup. I guess at this point, since we're pretty safe from danger, um, and also have them fill in the hole with us. All right. Yeah, National Guard and the EMTs are all arriving to take care of the wounded and help in whatever way they can. Um, yeah, the news is, is showing up. They want to interview everybody. You know, what happened? Who were those those creatures? What was that giant monster? And, uh, you know, they're very, very curious about everything. So, yeah, how do you guys handle the cleanup? Um Dharma's just going to say, I ain't got no idea. And she's quiet, but she's actually talking to the government about a side um, potential investment and helping them protect the city in the future from these things and um, going to profit from that, yes. Right. I'm going to leave the fast talking to the fast guy, and I'm just going to go to work, Push it, pushing rubble into the hole and trying to get stuff stacked and ready to be hauled off because, you know, there's there's work to be done. Uh, yeah, Dharma probably finds a pen and throws it at the guy that was doing the autographs. Here you go. <laughs> Knock yourself out. You can be the face. I don't care. Gather around. Gather around. Let I me tell, tell the you story. who wants who wants uh, the first dibs on the movie rights right here. <laughs> Who's got the first contract? Movie rights to Zephyr and his uh, I don't know his fans over here. Um, sure. Metal person and strong boy. <laughs> all right do you guys want to narrate uh, an epilogue for your character long term uh what what is the fate of these heroes does uh, dharma's investment pay off do the lizard men ever reappear um do you want to narrate any epilogue uh let's see well, okay, sure. Dharma's investment does pay off. She learns more about the society underground and uh, any technology that they have. Um, perhaps weaponry or things like that. And um, if there is any organic, organic bombs or something, whatever they have, that's crazy technology or crazy things that they have down there. And she reverse engineers it and she becomes the next uh, enslaver of the human race. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Dharma's gonna turn heel and become a super villain at some yeah, point. Yeah, turns to the next villain. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. oh, oh. So what oh. about Zephyr and Landslide long term? What becomes of them? Um, Landslide's going to, uh, you know, assist in in the cleanup and rescue operation afterwards, doing the heavy lifting. Uh, get his repu rep reputation as a hero of the people, wind up uh, dealing with any time there's a major, major natural disaster, earthquakes, 
tornadoes, anything like that. He can be seen in the cleanup. Um, winds up, you know, being a uh, spokesperson for what he considers a, an ethical and uh, good construction business, and just you know lives his life out as a working class hero. If the if the uh, lizard men ever come back, he's one of the first ones there. Perfect. And what about Zephyr long term? What becomes of uh, Zephyr the Red Blur? I'm gonna go a little silly on this one. Kind of like how in like um, he's gonna kind of turn out to be kind of like a gimmicky kind of superhero. Kind of like um, Captain Amazing and um, <laughs> Mystery Men. So he's gonna have like sponsors kind of like all over his like his suit, you know, like Pepsi and like Goodyear blimp and all that kind of stuff, funny things and like stupid commercials with like the toothpaste whitening kind of thing. And, you know, just kind of silly. And he'll, he'll do like the little uh, made to movie thing. He signs the first movie rights to it. And it's kind of like a silly B rated movie where he stars in it. And he's a really bad actor. And, you know, like you can see like the, like the lizard man coming out with a really bad suit. You can see their zippers <laughs> and everything like that. All right, the Gorn from Star Trek. He finally has yep, work yep. again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys very much for coming in for the Immune's Masterminds tutorial. I hope it got you hyped up about the system. I love this rule set. It's very easy to pick up. All you need is your mods plus your D20, and that's about it. Cool. Thank you for running. It was a fun game. Yeah, it was cool. Okay. You guys have a good night now. I'm, I'm probably going to sign out. Awesome. All right, take it easy. Cool. Thanks. All nice right. meeting you guys. Bye. Cheers. Yeah, bye. bye. Here's the game.